I am a middle-aged white woman. I am Italian-American. I am one homo sapien. I'm a young woman. I'm autistic. A performer. Extrovert. Artist. Artist. Half white and half Mexican. Hispanic woman. Mixed Mexican. Great guy. I am a mentally ill, neurodivergent Mexican. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Everything in the news lately is so freaking annoying. Do you mind if I rant to get some things off my chest? If they know how dangerous it is, then why risk it? I wouldn't put my family in danger. Why don't they just become legal? Why are autistic people so weird? Aren't they all just like vegetables of serial killers? I would kill myself if I was like that. Why do we need subtitles in the movie theater? I can hear the movie just fine. Of course I like gay people. I have like a gay best friend. Hate the sin, love the sinner, am I right? I'm not racist, I just prefer white guys. Are you tired of hearing these words? Inconsiderate, selfish, apathetic? Well, worry no longer, for these are all treatable symptoms with a little help from sympathy. A pill? Okay. With sympathy, you'll no longer feel like you can't relate to those around you. With effects lasting up to 12 hours a day, you'll no longer feel like that dense emotionless zombie you see in the mirror every day. With the advances in modern medicine, we've developed a medication that specifically targets receptors in the brain that are responsible for apathetic feelings and responses. After taking sympathy, you'll feel like a whole new you. Say goodbye to phrases like, I don't understand, and I don't care. Just a few minutes after taking sympathy, you'll find yourself coining together new, timeless phrases like, I'm sorry. As well as... Sending healing prayers and comforting hugs. And who can forget... I hope you feel better. Side effects may include belittling your friends, feelings of separation over a shared humanity, mild confusion, irritation and others, addiction to social media, seeking isolation, displacement of emotions, and in severe cases, disapproval by a family and friends. If at any point you experience suicidal thoughts, cease taking sympathy immediately and speak to your doctor or physician. Sympathy is not recommended for those who seek negative attention or persons with weak integrity. Please talk to your doctor or physician before taking sympathy. Sympathy. Call now.
take so much effort to pretend to be neurotypical? And honestly, I'd really rather not. Why don't people say what they really mean instead of hinting and then being surprised I don't have telepathy? I wish people would realize that we're not all the same. They might think they know someone like me, but they probably have no clue. Just because your nephew won't hug you doesn't mean that we all hate every form of human contact. You have to learn about each individual on each individual day. That's what we have to do for you. Don't treat us like children. And don't treat us like we're broken. We don't like to be treated like anything we've accomplished is somehow a miracle. I'm going to have a hard time with some things, and so are you. That doesn't make me lesser. I am not a person with autism. I am autistic. It's part of me. I am a mother of three. I have accumulated 53 years of history, and I have known trauma. I've heard the unreal sounds of grieving parents in the ER. I've seen children bullied at school and at home. Accidents, assaults, ostracism, suicides, diseases, death. I've seen them all. They are happening right now. People tell me I'm overreacting. They say, why don't you just chill out? What's the big deal? I know I'm exhausting to you. But when you judge me and tell me that all of my concerns for my kids and my community are an overreaction, you invalidate my reality. Enough. It's enough that I have to calm my heartbeat and my breathing and my gut to do what is required. I pull up courage every day to be everything I want to be. And I want to be a lot. Having anxiety doesn't mean I'm weak. It means I have to be brave. DACA has granted me the opportunity to work legally. It protects me from being deported. I still remember the first time I received my work permit. When I saw my name on the envelope, I was immediately overwhelmed with emotion. I finally had the opportunity to work. But DACA isn't permanent because the government still has the right to take it away. I love who I am and where I am from. I love Mexico, but that isn't my home. I have been raised in America. I only know America. Think of your children. What do you want for them? Why don't we deserve the same thing? I have proven myself to this country. I have proven that I deserve to be here. I have proven that I am not a threat. In no way does my presence jeopardize your security. Haven't I earned the right to feel the same as you? Oh my god. I could never imagine going through all those things that those other communities have. Okay, that's enough sympathy for me. Do you feel like you aren't doing enough? Are you finding it difficult to connect with those around you? Don't you wish it was easier to care? Well, stop wishing and start feeling with new, fast-acting empathy. Another pill? After that last one? Oh, what the heck? From the creators of the very successful drug, Sympathy, we bring you Empathy. Just one fast-acting pill will be enough to give clarity to that old metaphor, walk a mile in my shoes. Wait, you guys said that if I take another drug I would get paid. Nobody said I would have to walk a mile in someone else's smelly shoes. With advances in modern medicine, we've developed a new, long-lasting medication that specifically targets receptors in the brain that are responsible for apathetic feelings and responses. After taking new, long-lasting empathy, you'll feel levels of compassion towards others you never thought were possible. Say goodbye to lonely nights cooped up inside because you just can't relate to your friends and loved ones. Just a few minutes after taking new, long-lasting empathy, you'll find it's so much easier to relate to just about anyone. Before taking long-lasting empathy, it was like so hard to relate to people. My friends would be all like, you don't understand. And I'd be like, I do, that's why I care reacted on your post. And they were all like, that's not good enough. But now with long-lasting empathy, I do know how they feel. It's so great. <laughs> 
New fast acting empathy is not for everyone. Side effects may include seeking isolation, fear, uncertainty, painful thoughts or feelings, feeling the emotions of those closest to you, sensitivity, feeling overwhelmed, anxiety, seeking comfort in others, feelings of depression, fear, and or stress. If at any moment you feel any of these symptoms, cease taking empathy immediately and speak to your doctor or physician. New fast acting empathy is not recommended for those who experience these symptoms regularly. Please talk to your doctor or physician before taking new fast acting empathy. New fast acting empathy. Call now. In 2014, my family was going to be out of town, so my friend Emily invited me over to have Thanksgiving dinner with her friends and family. As soon as I got to her house, she introduced me to her mother. Don't I recognize you from somewhere? She asked. I had never seen her before, so I just said, maybe church? No, it was somewhere else. It'll come to me. She told me to go sit down, so I went into the dining room, and suddenly everyone was staring at me. I didn't think much about it, though, because I was the only one who went to a different school. As I sat down, Emily's mom pulled her around the corner, but not so far away that I couldn't still hear their conversation. I know where I saw him, she said. It was one of those cop shows. He's brown and Mexican. He looks just like that criminal. Mom, him being brown and Mexican has nothing to do with anything. You don't get to choose who my friends are. Her mom swung back into the room, but avoided eye contact. I waited, but no Emily. I had no idea what I should do. Leave? Wait? I was only 15 years old. But I didn't want to abandon the first person to make me feel like a friend instead of an outsider. When Emily finally returned, she just said, I'm sorry, and sat down next to me. She didn't care about my skin color or where my family was from. But even more than that, when she heard someone being racist, she spoke up and spoke out. And seven years later, she's loud as ever. We need more Emilys. It has been brought to my attention more than once that I speak very clearly. This would come as a compliment if it had been delivered in any way except you talk white. Firstly, this phrase is not a proper sentence. One does not talk in colors. We speak the way we were raised, just like everyone else. There is some confusion that all African Americans speak in a dialect known as Ebonics, which is a version of American English passed down through black generations from enslaved Africans. While this may be a common dialect, it is not the only one. And don't say I'm whitewashed, or pretending to be something I am not. It is simply speech. Nothing more, and certainly nothing less. What bothers me the most is that this insulting comment came not only from a white person, but a black person as well. This way of thinking has become so deeply rooted in our culture that it affects even those who are on the receiving end of the stereotype. We are not abnormal because we speak differently. We are abnormal because we have different experiences and upbringings. Just because I don't speak in a way that has become associated with black Americans does not make me any less of a black American. I talk the way I do simply because I have spoken this way all my life, for real. My existence is a political debate. Politicians argue over whether or not I can marry who I love. They argue over my right to exist as a person. They steal my sense of safety and autonomy when they deny me treatment for who I am. People have tried to correct my sexuality and gender as if my existence was a question and I had chosen wrong. You made us into your trophies, but I am not your gay best friend. My existence is not your fetish. You don't get to tell me who I can be and who I can love. I am not fucking confused. You want to know what it's like to be me? It fucking sucks. So help us. Help raise our voices and lift us up. Stand and fight with us. Educate yourself. You want to know what the LGBTQ community wants? We want you to fucking hear us. I want you to fucking hear us. I am an American college-age woman who lives with a disability. Here are some facts you need to know. Every 37 seconds, an American is sexually assaulted. One in five women have been the victims of sexual assault. One in five women experienced that sexual assault while in college. 40% of women with disabilities have experienced sexual assault. 
94% of women now have PTSD. The women are strong. We hold our heads high with car keys between our fingers as, and we walk across dark parking lots because we have to live our lives. I have a right to live my life. I guess I've always known that other people go through different struggles, but I never realized how these struggles affect us all. I know I would want someone in my corner for the things that affect me. I guess what I can do is just stand with them, even though I'll never understand truly what they have to go through. I am a middle-aged white woman. I am not a mother. I am not a wife. I have depression and social anxiety, but I am actively trying to participate. I am a teacher, and I am a tabletop role-playing nerd. I am an extrovert, and I am also disfellowshipped. I am one homo sapien. Yet I contain multitudes. And I'm also a non-binary lesbian who loves video games and dancing. I'm neurodivergent and gifted and challenged. I am also gender fluid. And I am a husband. And I am Catholic, but I am also liberal. Mexican and Portuguese but I don't speak either language. I'm a Christian, and I'm an ally. I'm not a damsel in distress, and I do not need to be safe. And I also have social anxiety. But I am loud and crass. I'm not fragile. Daughter of a recovering alcoholic. Raised in a, a dominant white household. A suicide survivor. An United States naval veteran. I'm not a religious person. I make great tamales. Like tabletop games. Like acting. I love coffee. I like rap music. Like cosplay. And a BFA recipient. I am not delicate. Unorthodox as all hell. I am a badass human being. And I don't need your help all the time. I am going to end it there for that one. <laughs> I can change the world with my own two hands, make it a better place. With my own two hands, make it a kinder place. With my own two hands, with my own, with my own two hands. With my own, with my own two hands. Gonna make it a brighter place. With our own two hands, gonna make it a safer place. With our own two hands, gonna help the human race. With our own two hands, with our own, with our own two hands.